the day what you doing 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 girl uh <laughs> showing you what your girl look like now these are not pajamas they just uh microfiber real soft something you can wear out matching top and pants we feel real soft you know when you go buy that soft stuff in in the in the in the stove I got me some coffee that's what I was getting I got y'all sitting up mighty dag on high don't you think well that's a book right there let me see It's an old book. Well, shoot. Let me turn it upside down. I guess y'all can read it like that way. <laughs> These are some of my mom books. Kitchen Counter Cures. Maybe I should crack it open, huh? No, I hadn't cracked it open. Okay, I just opened it. And I opened it to this page. Something about olive oil and okra. Olive oil and okra. What can you do with... Oh, a big fat difference. Okay, about the olive oil, olive oil, olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. And this one over here. About okra. They're getting your recipes, child. Two cloves of garlic. Uh, one red onion. Olive oil. Tomato. Some okra. Basil, sliced olives, salt to taste, brown black pepper. This ain't no, I don't see what that can cure. They talk about how many servings and make servings for four. Yeah. Don't cancel. They were talking about foods rich in compounds were half, these people right here, you were half likely to eat, if you eat like that, I guess. That mixture right there. What is this over here about this olive oil? This is a good fat to use, I guess they saying right here, uh, to reduce cancer, dry nails, heart disease. And high blood pressure. They head it off at the path, you know, stop it for a start kind of thing. <laughs> oh, and here's her other book. Okay, that's one book. And then here's another book. You know what I was thinking since I pulled them books out. And when I was younger, and my mom and dad was alive, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up stuff, child. I said it's just slipping right here. I got I got stuff up under this this L shaped desk. You know how you get. I hope I ain't becoming a pet rat, y'all. Lord, I hate pet rats. <laughs> if you ain't using it, throw it away. Your girl becoming a pet rat. That's too good to throw away. Give it to somebody. Child, don't nobody want your junk. <sighs> I sit like an Indian in, in, in this chair, so that's what I was doing just then. But anyway, y'all. Y'all see me. Y'all see me. Y'all know Val. Val ain't doing that. But, okay, I was talking to y'all about them books. Let me tell you something about these here books. When people get old... 
and they think they finna leave him because every little thing scam because all their friends and relatives and folks around their age dropping like flies. They start doing this. They start taking vitamins. Child, I probably got almost 10 different vitamins. Almost. And then I thought about when my daddy was older, he started taking vitamins, some liquid vitamins called K-something. And then he was, he was take, they was into the vitamins, the herbs, the, the, the cayenne pepper, all this kind of stuff. Um, and they still left here. My mom was into it. And now look, look, I ain't, I ain't read it, y'all. Don't, don't, I ain't read it. I looked in it a couple of times, but I ain't read it just like I did just then. And then I took it and set aside. What I use this for is when I do my eating channel and this platter right here, I set, set it up high. So when I talk on video and then I cover this, when I talk on video for the plate won't slip, when I set a plate on it, I can um, lift the plate up to the level of the laptop. That's what this for. And, and sometimes I do it like this. And y'all see it sitting over here like that. Because I had them books covered. Because I be using it to lift the plate. Uh, eye level. So whatever I'm eating. It uh, look like it's a lot on the plate. Because it's so close to the camera. You know, fakery. Fakery, fakery, fakery. It be a full plate. It just look like a lot. Because so many people try to have plates like this. Trying to eat that. I lose folks in two or three minutes anyway. That's what the, uh, the, uh, what you call it, the analysts of, of your channel. They say people don't watch them more about two or three minutes. So if you ain't gonna watch but two or three minutes, hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. That's why people say it in the beginning of their videos. Because if you wait till the end of your video, honey, they gone. Let the commercials play. Share with somebody. Thank you. Well, anyway. Child. Oh, everybody that's think they, they they got one foot in the grave and one foot on earth, start finding every remedy to try to stay here longer. I'm trying to find that remedy too. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank us. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to take care of us, you know, all of us. Thank you, Jesus. This girl, a young lady, lost her husband. And she told me to do a video on how to continue on after you lose your spouse. I could tell you this, that me, I don't know that hurt. I don't know that hurt. And can't nobody tell you how that feel unless they have walked that path. I know you asked me to speak on something, but you asking me to speak on something I know nothing about. Nothing. Um, Willie is still with me. Uh, my children, Daddy, is still around here somewhere. If I really wanted to know where he was, I could find him. So, they are still here. So, I can't talk to you about uh, how to move on after leaving a spouse. Now, my friend lost his wife and he's just not going through it I can't give him comfort because when I saw him there he's trying to be happy um with the home going service with the shouting and and cause they were holding this and um saying that this, they with that she in the bosoms of the Lord or when God come back he gonna take her first and then those that remain are gonna be left and so those that remain, those that remain in the Lord is going to be taken up after after the ones that's already, um, you know, passed on. Well, anyway, I can't tell you, sweetie. I'm I'm sorry. I can't tell you how to move on after a spouse has passed. The only thing I can say is. That God is there with you. You're laying in the arms of God. And he's your comforter. He is your comforter. And if anybody can comfort you, it's got to be him. And anybody can see you through this, it's got to be him. 
I know we get mad at God for taking our spouse from us. We get mad at God because he allowed it to happen. But once that hurt is over, he's going to be the one to take you through it all. He's going to be the one that's going to be there when you just make it through the other side. That's all I can say. Because I don't know. I haven't walked that walk. If you really want to know something like that, sometimes you got to talk to people that don't walk that walk, that been through what you done been through. They can tell you it's going to be all right. But I know God, and I know God going to make it all right. It's going to be all right. I can't, I can't, I'm, I can't. I can say that I can feel what you're feeling, but I don't. I can't speak on that. I don't know. I can't speak on that. I don't know. But all I can tell you, there is a comforter. Lay in his arms. Cry in his arms. Talk to him about it. As if he's a natural man in your house. People think you're talking to your dead spouse, but no, you're talking to God. You're telling God, help me. And he said, if you ask him for help, he'll help you. Help me go through this, God. I, I, I don't know if I can go through this. Help me. You got to help me. You got to help me. You got to help me. And he will help you. That's all I can say. He said, when you're drowning, when you, when, you, when you ain't got no help, just call on him and he will help you. Help you, help you through this. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm sorry. That's it. When the spirit lift like that. <laughs> and then I don't have nothing else to say. Sometime I wonder, should I turn the video off? Or should I continue to do what I was doing? But I ain't going to leave you like that. I'm going to continue doing what I was doing because one thing is, when a person closes their eyes, life still goes on. The sun still rises the next day. There is some joys in each and every day. And some things just keep moving. And we would love for you to keep moving with it. To find some joy in something throughout this day. If it ain't nothing but watching Val sit up here, do her hair, and still look trifling afterwards. Or do her hair and still look. <laughs> Val, you can go out those with that one. Because that's what I'm finna do. I'm just going to Walmart. It's Christmas. I ain't bought nothing for Christmas dinner. I need to get myself up and go out there. Because Willa asked me just this morning, what was I cooking for Christmas dinner? Because I did not put up the tree and I do not have no Christmas music going on in the house. I said, cook. I said, I was just going to cook what we got in the kitchen. You know, like cook what we normally cook. I cook some chicken, cook some mashed potatoes, you know, cook some green beans, you know, food that we just regularly eat. And then... I said, well, what do you want? I just wanted to know what you was going to cook for Christmas. What you say? Nothing. <laughs> I was going to cook nothing for Christmas. I said, what the day is? He said, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I said, what? See, usually I would have a Christmas music going all the time, watching Christmas movies and videos. And so that to keep me in the spirit of Christmas. And by the time Christmas come, I'd be so excited. Got the tree up. I guess I'm going to be on the tree. Child, I still look up under the tree. I am 58 years old. And every Christmas, if I have a Christmas tree up, I look up under the tree. Come there. I ain't putting that up this year. Because I ain't looking no more.
<laughs> I still believe in miracles. I still believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> he ain't never coming to my house when I was little. And I still looked every Christmas. Nothing. Apples and oranges and, and nuts. That's all was there. That's all we could afford. And that was given to us. By an insurance company across the street. Oh well. <laughs> let me let me start taking my hair loose. They I believe in Santa Claus. Mm, I love watching movies about Santa Claus. I just love watching movies about Santa Claus. <laughs> Cause there is a God, honey. You think God gonna work, make a miracle, work in the hearts of these these Santa Clauses, and, and, and tell them to send you some? <laughs> know that they're not the miracle. God is the miracle. <laughs> All these fakeries you touch their heart, touch their mind. Think about Val. She a little girl sitting there waiting. <laughs> That's one thing I love about Christmas too. That people that really believe <laughs> never stop believing. They still a little kid in heart, and I'm still a little girl, no matter how old I get. <laughs> I'm still a little girl, and I always say, "I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing." But then when I walk in the store and I see, um, they have these little cases of this little little perfume man and a little little makeup man that you know how they have these little packages put together. And I say, That man he has just enough to just grab one of them, put wrap it up and give it to me. I don't understand. <laughs> I was looking at some white diamond and, 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 and different colognes and then I looked at the set they have all the, the the high dollar fragrances, but you can get them all for about ten dollars or fifteen dollars or something like that. If they fake, they fake. But then it's the thought. What thought did you give me? I think about him every Christmas. I buy him something every Christmas. Every birthday. He would do anything like that. Oh, I gotta block him. <laughs> I gotta block him for real. He'd be mad. I gotta block him. <laughs> Y'all hear me? <laughs> I gotta block him. And you know what? I thank you for that because I never, ever, ever would have thought about that. Before I upload this video, I'm going to do it then and then upload the video. Can't let it get out, honey. What did you say? You know, y'all know, y'all know. Don't act brand new with me, y'all know. But I, I thank the Lord that I still had him to pull up with. Once I get my face together and I look like somebody, <laughs> then I can do it. I can deal with the hair, honey. But you know what? When I went to the farm, I was looking fine and all, and and I was worried about nothing. I looked alright, but um, I had my hair pulled back like this, and I say, "Fail, you got them wigs, and you in here with these folks. All these folks got their hair. You had, but they got their wigs. They got their they." You know how they grow them ladies in church with them wigs and and they they wigs but they falling like that and they they, they short they got them little short ones going all the way around and then if they long they about right here and they flowing some kind of way and I said well <laughs> I told y'all I wasn't wearing a wig and I had my hair pulled back like a little girl so y'all saw me <laughs> but I look you for in the face so I don't know child I felt like a little girl I said girl you didn't even dress like no grown folks. <laughs> If you can't, if you feel what you feel, you feel what you feel, right? But you know what? I was really surprised. How did I know this woman? Now this is another thing. I know this lady for eighteen years.
Now, I am Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, Jesus to the bone. Baptism in Jesus' name, holding this Pentecostal, whatever you want to call it. And when I went to that church, I have never been to church with this lady, even though I've been knowing her for 18 years. We talk, I mean, we don't even talk about church. I did not know she was holiness. And I was sitting in that church, and I really liked the pastor. The pastor was really nice, really good. I mean, I liked the word. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I, I can relate, because that was right down my street. Uh, because I hadn't been to funerals before, and the pastors hadn't been down my street. But this pastor went right down my street, so you know what I mean. I can, I can relate. Um, I, I was in that church and I was asking the Lord why didn't I know she was holiness you try the spirit by the spirit and when you look at somebody they know you you know you you know they like you um you can feel holiness off another person. You can feel save off another person. It's something in them, even though they don't talk to you about the Bible, and they're not talking about religious stuff, it ain't got nothing to do with Bible, but you can know, you, you know that you know in your know that that person has the Holy Ghost, right? I've been knowing her for 18 years, and I didn't know. That she went to a hole in this church. I still can't say she had the Holy Ghost. I still can't say that. In here. That I know she had the Holy Ghost. But I know she had. She was, She lived a. Good life. With her husband. Married to one man. She wore dresses all the time. I, that should have been a clue right then. Because I was from the old time. Hole in the church. And I wonder why. She always wore them dresses. If she had on something up under the dresses, like some pants, she had to dress on over it. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of looked old-fashioned in kind of a way. Because I had started out in a church where we only wear dresses, no pants, no makeup, no no nothing like that. I started out like that. And then our pastor got to understand it, and he started letting us wear, wear makeup. Then he started letting us wear pants. So, um, um. And I, I was in that church a long time after that. But sometime the spirit bear witness to the spirit. And that never happened. Out of 18 years. And I am dumbfounded. I am dumbfounded. I can believe people could be safe, safe, I mean, um, I believe people could be faithful to their husband. I believe people can, um, be nice and kind and not actually have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, Holy Ghost. Now, I believe people can be that way, but I don't know. And it's another lady that was there that I know from that same church. And I've been knowing her for some years. And I saw her in the church and she was the mistress of ceremony. And I didn't know she went to a holiness church. Her conversation didn't let me know she went to a holiness church. And I didn't feel that from from her either. So what is that? What is that, y'all? How come not when the preacher spoke? It was our word. When I felt the spirit in that church was not when the preacher spoke, it was when another pastor was praying. And we all were praying along with them. And I was saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And I was saying, hallelujah, not real loud, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I spoke in tongues just a little bit underneath my voice because it was a soft prayer. That's when I felt the Spirit. That's when I felt the Spirit when I was praying. And I could, you know how you could feel those those vibes and stuff? And uh, the, the anointing rest on you and you be, and you, but you, I'm not loud and because and, I'm I'm in a different place. I wasn't being loud. It was a funeral, you know what I'm saying? And they was just praying for the family, and I was praying for the family too. That's when I felt the spirit. Um, see, I questioned um, why the spirit didn't bear witness that the, for those two ladies that I know and their holiness. That's, that has, I'm going to say that has never happened to me. That I would know a person that well and don't know they got the Holy Ghost. How can that be? We would have had so much more in common to hang out with in this, in the, in, because we had the Lord together. Maybe they're not fire baptized. Say, Val, what you mean by fire baptized? I mean speaking in tongues. Maybe they just, how can you be holding this and not speaking tongues, though? Can you be holding this and not speaking tongues? Because my church is a Pentecostal church. You can be, you can be holding this and not be Pentecostal. You that out there, answer that for me. Can you be holiness and not be Pentecostal? Well, they all say, what you mean by Pentecostal? Because on the day of Pentecost, that's when the Holy Ghost fell. They spoke in tongues. Okay, my church believe, on, believe in what happened on the day of Pentecost, that it can happen now. So, we still lay hands, people speak in tongues. And people be get filled with the Holy Ghost once you receive the Holy Spirit. You can receive the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. We'll say, Val, when you receive the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues, tongues is the evidence that you got the Spirit. Tongues is the evidence. Tongues is the evidence. Whether you speak fluently or you just babble like a baby, in the beginning, that's the evidence. You got to keep talking to start speaking a complete language. I don't know, y'all. I believe you could be holding this and not have tongues. Excuse me, because the preacher spoke the word and he spoke truth and it was good. But I didn't feel the anointing. And anointing come with prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. That's how the anointing comes. And you would think most preachers would, would pray and fast, but they don't, that's not necessarily true either. I don't know, y'all. I'm talking about my experience, you know. I, 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 um, how come I didn't know? I'm not saying that she didn't have it, and I'm not saying that she wasn't holding this, but how come... The spirit didn't bear witness to the spirit. How can you know somebody for 18 years and not know they were holding this? But then you can say, Val, she didn't know you was holding this. But I think people can pick that up from me. 
Can't they have? Did y'all know know that about me? Did y'all know I tried? Cause your honey, your girl has cussed on him. So y'all probably thought maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Well, maybe that's what it is. 